What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Knights of the Nerds Table. I'm your host, EJ, and today we are going to dive into DC's highly anticipated anti-hero flick, Black Adam. Before we get too far, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more content. Unlike DC's parent company, Warner Bros., the Knights actually put out somewhat consistent content on a regular basis. So if you love these characters as much as we do, you're going to love what you see and love what you hear. Let's get into it. Black Adam first appeared as a character in the Marvel Family Issue 1 in 1945. The character was created as a villain, by Adam Binder and CeCe Beck. He served as an antagonist for the character Captain Marvel, or as he's known these days as Shazam. From there, he gained quite a substantial fan following. In 2014, the early days of the DCEU, it was announced that wrestling legend Dwayne The Rock Johnson was attached to play the mighty villain. In early development, Black Adam was supposed to be introduced in the Shazam movies, but The Rock felt like he really deserved his own outing. But like many DC projects, it languished in development. It was finally prioritized in 2019, but once again, the pandemic held it back. After multiple reschedules and delays, Black Adam will finally be gracing the theaters on October 23rd, or so they say so far. We've seen bits and pieces of what this movie could look like from the trailers. We also know there will be major characters from the DC pantheon finally gracing the big screen in this outing. First and foremost, we are getting an introduction to the Justice Society of America. In the comics, the Justice Society of America, or the JSA, is Earth's oldest superhero team, spanning generations. In this lineup of the JSA, we will have Adam Smasher, played by Noah Centennial, Hawkman, played by Aldous Hodge, Dr. Fate, played by Pierce Bronson, and Cyclone, played by Quintessa Swindell. These are familiar faces to DC fans, but they are not that well known among general audiences, so I'm excited to see these characters finally have their debut. Dr. Fate, or Kent Nelson, is a powerful wizard and a founding member of the Justice Society. His powers include telekinesis, light phasing, and other magical properties. In the comics, Kent Nelson is the son of an archaeologist, so on one of his father's digs, Kent encounters an immortal called Naboo. Now, his father unfortunately dies during the dig, and Naboo, feeling sorry for young Kent Nelson, decides to reveal himself as one of the eternal lords of order, and agrees to teach him science so advanced it brings him to magic. He is then given a golden helmet, and when he puts the helmet on, he becomes Dr. Fate. I became familiar with this character while watching the cartoon series Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, where he served as a supporting character. Next up, we have the Atom Smasher, or Albert Rothstein, who will also debut. Albert Rothstein inherited control over his muscular density, which means he can enlarge himself and shrink himself at will, much like Ant-Man in the Marvel Universe. In the comics, when Black Adam joins the JSA, Adam Smasher and Black Adam become allies and friends. I'm interested in seeing if this is something that this film will explore as well. We will also be getting the debut of Hawkman in this movie. Now, much like his teammate, Dr. Fate, Hawkman also has a background in archaeology. Now, from what I hear, in this version, he's also the reincarnation of a prince who once enslaved Black Adam. Much like a hawk, Hawkman is blessed with the power of flight from his metal wings. This is the Carter Hall version spelled with a C, unlike the Carter Hall version spelled with a K. Now, the Carter Hall version spelled with a K is Thanagarian, which makes him a little bit different than a, just a reincarnation. Both of these characters were briefly explored in Justice League Unlimited and Justice League, and the Carter Carter Hall's version spelled with a K was also explored in the Flash television show. Last but not least, we also have Cyclone Maxine Hunkel, a heroine that can harness the power of wind so much that she can turn into a tornado. In the comics, her powers were given to her by a mad scientist experimenting on her with nanobites. We also have at least one DCEU veteran coming back, the queen herself, Viola Davis. Having appeared in both Suicide Squads and Peacemaker, it seems she is here to stay. One of the rare hits that DC has had that hasn't involved herself with drama. Because of all the other drama that involves DC, I don't think we talk enough about how great Viola Davis has been as Amanda Waller. She's conniving, cutthroat, and straight and to the point. We love her, and I hope she's here to stay. The villain in this movie is Sabak, a powerful alter ego to the Marvels in the comics. His powers come from the Dark Forces, and in the comics, he fights Superman and Captain Marvel. He also has an acronym for his name. S for the invincible strength of Satan. A for the indestructible body of Am. B for the evil wisdom of Belial. B for the flame powers of Belzebub. A for the evil courage of Asmodeus. And C for the flight of Kratos. In the latest trailer, it seems like Sabak is being resurrected by people in modern times. It sure does appear that Black Adam and the JSA will have their hands full with Sabak. The plot for this film, for the most part, has been somewhat under wraps. It appears as if Black Adam will start out as a slave on an ancient planet in this film. Inspired by the biblical story of Hebrew enslavement in Egypt, Teth Adam, which is his name at the time, will be subjected to the brutality that slavery brings, and this experience will mold his dark alter ego. At some point, the magician Shazam will show up, grant him his powers, 
choosing him as his champion. Like Shazam, he is able to change it to his superhero form by shouting the word Shazam! Unlike Billy Batson, Black Adam does not like to shed his superhero form to go back to his mortal form as often because he is truly addicted to his power and he never wants to be in a place where he does not have his power. Unfortunately, in this instance, the magician's trust would have been misplaced in Black Adam as Black Adam turned into a vengeful and angry force motivated by revenge rather than true justice. It is heavily hinted in his trailer that during his enslavement, his son passes away, fueling his rage even more. In the latest trailer, it also hints that Black Adam will be showing up in our modern world after being in slumber for about 5,000 years. The Justice Society will probably not be too keen about a rogue soup forcing his version of justice on the world. They will be doing their darndest to put an end to it, probably with a little prodding from Amanda Waller. There's a lot riding on this film. We haven't seen any DCEU film since Suicide Squad in 2021. Sure, we had the Peacemaker series on HBO Max, but besides that, we really haven't had anything. Since then, we've been engulfed in the regular DC drama that we fans have grown to hate. Warner Bros. Discovery has been a mess of a merger in a lot of ways, and that mess has spilled over into the Twitter discourse. Batgirl was suddenly cancelled, the Flash movie was moved back, and obviously Ezra Miller went insane. Everything is in flux, executives have been fired, and no one really knows what the future holds for DC. This is the first movie that is coming officially under the new Warner Bros. Discovery label. Bringing in the Justice Society, it really has a chance to open up the DC world and can give fans something to actually be excited about for once. Personally, I have high hopes for the film. Like I've stated many times in this video, it's going to be very comic book accurate to the origins of these characters from Hawkman to Black Adam to Dr. Fate to Adam Smasher to Cyclone. I'm really excited for this. I think there's a lot going for it. Private screenings have reported that the action is close to what Zack Snyder put together for Man of Steel. In fact, the trailer scene where Black Adam utilizes his super speed are very reminiscent of Feora versus the US military fight in Man of Steel. The Rock has been teasing a Superman versus Black Adam fight since he was cast in the role, even posting a picture of him and Henry Cavill sharing some bourbon and talking about the future on Instagram. Despite Cavill not showing up at Comic-Con, I'm hoping that we get some type of cameo for the Man of Steel. The DCU needs him. Regardless, the rest of the film does look enticing. I'm hoping that there's lots of surprises and lots of action. Maybe The Rock's charisma can help rise DC from the ashes of confusion that they are currently in. Here's to hoping. Thanks for watching. What are you looking forward to the most in this film? Do you think we will get to see our boy in blue go up against Black Adam in the future? Let me know in the comments. Please once again like and subscribe to our channel for more content. And until next time, night out. Have a good one.